Hi friends, it all started when a powerful, very popular 775th collector motor came into my hands. This is a low voltage electric motor, in my case 12 volt. It is quite often used both by manufacturers of power tools and people in various die projects. Indeed, despite the small size of the engine, it is very powerful and high torque, with good speed. But the motor lay idle until the local aircraft modelist suggested to test it in a laboratory, precisely speaking, to test torque and other characteristics. In general, I want to say that in the near future, the video with experiments and constructing will probably come out. Let's see what happens if we mix aircraft modeling with electronics. A huge request to leave your feedback on this. For me, it is very important. Let's go to the point. It was necessary to assemble a PWM speed controller for this motor, and frankly, I had already Chinese PWM controller. But it's not interesting simply to insert the finished block, even if it is for experiments. We are able to hold a soldering iron in our hands and can do it in no worse than the Chinese manufacturer. Everything that will be shown and described further, I think, will be useful to people who want to assemble an electric bike with their own hands from what is at hand. Yes, brushless motors are good, but they are expensive. But the usual ones can be bought at any flea market for almost nothing. Assembling the speed control for the controller motor isn't difficult, and I will show you how to do this. The circuit is very universal, fairly low cost and easy to make. And most importantly, it is literally rubber. If desired by adding power switches, you can increase the power as much as you want, of course, within reasonable limits. The heart of the whole design is the favorite timer NE555. Everyone knows that this timer can generate a sequence of rectangular pulses with the ability to adjust both the pulse duration and frequency. To the chip output is added a repeater on a complementary pair of medium power transistors. This is a common current amplifier that is designed to correctly control the power transistors as well as to unload the NE555 timer. In general, the Chinese produce similar PWM regulators in which the NE555 timer controls field effect transistors directly without a repeater. I don't know how good this solution is, but the circuit without this node will look like this. At the input of this particular circuit, you can apply voltage up to 34 volts, but I advise no more than 30 volts. The control system with the driver is powered by a 12 volt linear regulator, which minimizes the effects of the supply voltage on the control circuit. But in my case, this board will always work at an input voltage of 12 volts and I can do without a stabilizer. Next are the power transistors. This is a bunch of fake IRF3205. Yes, guys, it's fake. Now at AliExpress, almost all are fake. So that I didn't fail, I had to connect them in parallel. In principle, while everything works, but for how long, nobody knows. Well, if you don't want to risk so, I can recommend the LCSC service. It's a major supplier of electronic components directly from manufacturers at affordable prices. The choice is just dizzying. You will find everything from passive components to literally everything that you want. Finished products, kit sets, circuit boards and much more. Products are from hundreds of brands, including those with a worldwide name. The company has huge warehouses and works all over the world. There are convenient payment systems and a lot of delivery methods. You will get only original products at affordable prices from global manufacturers. The link is in the description. Parallel to the load in the opposite direction, a pair of high power diodes KD2997 is connected. You can use any with a reverse voltage of 200 volts and a current of 30 amperes or more, especially if the diode isn't installed on the radiator, as in my case. I think it's clear why I need this diode. The motor is an inductive load. At the moment, then, the circuit is disconnecting, we have self-induction from the motor winding. Self-induction voltage is sometimes greater than the supply voltage, and a surge of self-induction voltage can easily ruin the circuit. 
The diode will put out the surge and it is connected in this direction because self-induction voltage has a reverse polarity that is a minus is applied to the cathode and the diode opens. More clearly this can be seen on the oscilloscope. The motor's rotor runs at an enormous speed. The voltage is supplied to it through the brush assembly that is switching of the windings and surges occurs. Given the fairly decent diameter of the windings of the 775th motor, the self-induction current will be significant so the diode will heat up and it is advisable to install it on the radiator. This is about the circuit. Field effect transistors operate in a switch mode and when working with such a motor it can be said that they are almost cooled, even at high currents up to 20 amperes. But anyway, they need to be installed on the common radiator. It isn't necessary to isolate the substrates. Power tracks on a printed circuit board must be tinned and reinforced with a copper wire if you intend to connect powerful motors to this board. How much power can have the loads connected to this controller? In principle, if all the transistors are original, then it's about 1.2 to 1.5 kilowatts. Yes, you didn't miss here. Moreover, it is possible to connect both. Motors using the board as a speed regulator and other loads, for example, heaters using the board as a power regulator. Thanks to the PWM method of controlling the efficiency of such circuits is at a very high level. It is the ideal option for portable devices because the losses are minimal. Well, in the end let's connect our 775th monster. We will load the motor with the huge aircraft model propeller. I frankly feel a bit scary. The torque and sound inspires horror and respect. Power supply is about 11 to 12 volts. Powerful lithium ion battery used. The current consumed by the engine with such a load is about 26 amperes, an enormous load on the shaft. Considering the supply voltage, the power consumed by the motor is about 300 watts. Perhaps it's time to finish. I have a few ideas for the implementation of this device, but I'm ready to listen to your ideas. The archive of the project with a printed circuit board can be downloaded from the link in the description. Please don't forget to subscribe to my Instagram. Now I say goodbye until we meet again. With you was Kasyan TV.